All right. We are here with a side mission episode of the Expendable Crew. Uh, we were going to let uh, Rihanna run whatever she wanted to do for a little while. <laughs> um, for the purposes of timeline, we'll say this happened a few days ago from uh, where we last left off, which means that the only thing you don't have in your inventory is those vials of rage. Okay. Uh, and that you absolutely want to take rage while you're out and about today. Oh, no, 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 no. I had no intentions of taking it myself. Okay. Okay. Because I have no idea what it would do to me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I said, I know we had talked about you running one of the, uh, a job that you had been informed about or mm -hmm. a building you had been informed about that was mostly vacant. Uh, but yeah. you wanted to do something else. Because we can play around with time a little bit here, you know. It can be like, here's the, the reconnaissance you've done over a couple of days sort of situation. Right. We right. don't have to worry about other players for a little while. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was very interested in when you had, I guess when Learned had said something about this collector person mm -hmm. um, who likes to collect a lot of interesting things. And that kind of, of course, piqued my interest because, um, you know, Rihanna's whole mission is to and Victor and his children for what they did. Mm -hmm. And so she figures if this guy collects things that might be artifacts, they might be useful in her fight against him. So, yeah. And it's not necessarily just a money gain. It's a, can I find something that will be useful for me that will help me out? Sure. But if I find stuff that's shiny that I can sell for cash, yeah, I'll do that too. Because, I mean, after all, I'm a thief. Of course. Of course. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we will say that because you're not a fool, you've done a little bit of reconnaissance. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's what you would have learned just from casual conversation with people in the area. Uh, Cause you obviously can't ask too many questions or people start getting suspicious about why you're right. asking questions. Um, right. But you know that this house belongs to a man named uh, Isaac Pierce. Uh, he's a very wealthy man, comes from a family of merchants. So he probably hasn't actually worked past doing, you know, learning the, the finances for his family business. Mm -hmm. He never actually worked a day in his life outside of that. Um, <laughs> of course. I mean, you know, I, I've been actually trying to research nobility in this time world, this type of world. So I know they own things and they put people to work and that's how you earn the title of nobility. Right. Anyway, um, so anyway, he's done very well for himself. Uh, he's grown the, the family business since it got left to him. And what kind of business did they have? Uh, or is that something you hadn't really thought of? I just said merchants. So, oh, okay. you know, okay. they they bought and sold various things. Okay. Um, so like just a store, like kind of like a general goods store. Yeah, I think that they more or less have like uh, rights to shipping lane uh, traffic. Uh, okay. So, you know, they were able to sell people passage and things of that nature. Okay. Um, Again, I, I haven't done that much research. Sure. No, um, that's fine. But basically... Well, comes... so sometimes you have, like, a very detailed thing about each of these people, and we don't know until we ask, and then the one time I ask, actually ask you, you're like, um... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's I don't because... ask about the ones you have stuff for. Well, it's just that I, I don't know how to... I don't know that much about merchants in, fan, uh, right. in medieval times, let alone fantasy worlds. So That's the beauty I... of it. You make it all up. So, okay, in that case, what they did was they owned, uh, they originally started off as, you know, traveling merchants. And then as things grew, they were able to have convoys and then, you know, ships to do the, to bring in the exotic goods. And that's where the family money came from. So okay. by the time he comes along, all it is, is managing the people who do the work. Right. So, you okay. know, he's got ships under his command. Well, not under his, he's got ships in his employ. He has convoys in his employ. And all okay. he has to do is make sure that the numbers add up. And usually he's just double checking the accountant's work to make sure he's not being cheated too badly. Right. <laughs> so that's what I mean by merchant. Okay. So I'm got glad it. you made me explain that. Good. <laughs> the one time I come up with a, I didn't come up with a full backstory. <laughs> But what That's he what I'm does, here for, to push you. <laughs> what he does with his time is he collects artifacts of uh, that are interesting. Uh, he does mm -hmm. this through various channels. Some of them 
or you know above board auctions or he'll pay you know explorers to you know he'll finance a, an archaeology site and then he just takes some of the things for his personal collection okay. and uh some people might even call what he does grave robbing <laughs> uh, because he also definitely uses uh, less reputable auctions yes um but he loves to show off what he has for people and that's <laughs> one of the things he is known for is he might call it philanthropic uh, preservation. He just wants to show off all the shiny things he can buy. Yeah. Uh, that's the sort of person he is. Uh, that's okay. what you take. It takes no effort on your part to learn. He is a show off and he likes to exploit his money by telling people, look at this statue that I obtained from such and such lost civilization. Doesn't it look good in my living room? Mm-hmm that's the kind of person he is okay frick probably would have kicked his ass on principle oh yeah so sort of pompous show off privileged kind of arsehole yes uh he does occasionally go on some of his own expeditions provided that someone else has already made sure that you know the traps have been disabled so you oh, know, yeah. he does occasionally actually enter a place uh, huh. So it's not unusual for him to go on quote unquote business trips. Yeah, after all, he does mm -hmm. have this you know merchant empire is sort of a strong word, but he he does <laughs> have his own business to take care of, and then there's his hobby. So going away for a few <laughs> weeks isn't that unusual, and mm -hmm. apparently he's on one of these trips now because Learned had said he's been out of town for a couple of weeks. Your checks of the house have shown that no one is going in or out. Okay, so there's like, he doesn't even keep anybody there to look after the place while he's gone. Uh, probably sort of like what Viserys' family did, and there's okay. a certain amount of built in housekeeping. Right. Uh, because right. another thing that I've been, you know, uh, the latest expansion from uh, uh, the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron has kind of helped mm -hmm. me to build on the, the arcane technology ideas I already had. And that is okay. that certain enchantments can be built in and made permanent. And Unseen Servant okay. costs a little bit, but it's worth it to have somebody to keep your house clean and not fall right. apart. Right. Okay. Uh, the same way with a lot of the, uh, the arcane locks sort of thing. You know yeah. that a lot of front doors are magically locked. Uh, you knew that even before Viserys gave you a way in and out of his house. Right. Okay. Alrighty. Well, then I think that probably what I would do once I have uh, spent enough time figuring out uh, that there's not anybody there. Mm -hmm. And I, I I would say that in my conversations with people, which I'm assuming some of this information that I found out probably was, you know, by the way of, you know, hanging out in a tavern and having a few drinks with people that might know him and just kind of, you know, because once people start drinking, they loosen up a little bit and they say things, they talk a lot more about people. And I know this. Yes. Um, uh, so. In fact, if you give me just a sec, I've, I've got certain uh, individuals here. Oh, yes. Because uh, I've been waiting to, to bring this guy out. Uh, there's one gentleman. He is a, a former captain of the military. Uh, but He's um he's retired now, so he has nothing better to do than to sit <laughs> in the bars and talk to people. So you can have mm. a conversation with him if you'd like. Okay. Because uh, um, he's he's a bit of a a gossip. Uh, I mean, again, he's, he's the he's kind of people I look for. He is military, so he certainly has you know what is on everything will of course be flavored by that particular opinion of course but of course. his name is a uh, sterling exter uh sterling and i exter. was i was a captain in the the legions you see i was forced to retire after i hurt my knee uh, not to say <laughs> that i hurt my knee and then i instantly retired no no i completed my uh service in fact, they told me that if I had taken time off and let it heal, I might have been able to continue. But no, I was not going to be dishonorably discharged for medical reasons. I completed my service, and then I retired. And that's why I walk with this cane. <laughs> uh, 
I see. So you've seen quite a few things there, haven't you there, oh, Captain? Oh, yes, yes, madam. I, In fact, uh, my leg actually got injured in a skirmish with the wolf people to the south, the savage creatures. Uh, we were on uh, just an exploration, and one of the beasts spooked my horse. It fell onto my leg. I was able to dispatch the monster, even with injured as I was. Oh, how traumatizing that must have been oh well uh, I would the have been, horse I would, was fine. Have been positively i would have been positively just terrified oh uh, not mean, at how, all how not did at you all. manage well it wasn't easy but uh it is skilled training that is the key and that <laughs> is what king wilson does not understand he is always more of a, a scholar he says that with as much disdain as a man of nobility can put behind the word <laughs> uh, not nothing like his brother, who is a true warrior, madam, a true warrior. He was happy to go out on the front lines and to even I didn't get to go hunting with him because of my leg, you see, but he was a true huntsman. <laughs> okay, just for clarification, mm -hmm. he is speaking ill of the current king. It, yes, uh, not okay. to the level where anyone's going to execute him for right, it. Right, but, but yeah, but I totally pick up on like, that. He's so. like, yo, we're, we have a scholar leading us now. Huzzah. Mm. Mm, whatever will happen to this city? Well, hopefully we will have a proper war, and that will teach whoever <laughs> his heir is how to conduct things. But we mm. haven't had a proper war in years. Well, <laughs> In order for in order for him to have an heir, he first has to be married and find the right woman. Uh, yes, but he's just going to want to teach them books and mm. technology. The only technology we need is how to throw a javelin further. <laughs> I mean, there is there are some benefits to some book learning, Captain. Oh but yes. There has to be. But you there do has to learn be a balance. from I mean, the past. You can't fight off those. Vi you cannot fight off those vicious wolf people with your books. Well, the the wolf people are no longer concerned. They fled the cowards. Uh, no, that is mm -hmm. not. That was that's speaking ill of a, a valiant enemy. They were once a true warrior race. Uh, it was slightly before my time. They were still a a cause of concern during my time. But they once put. And this is where you are true. We do need to know history, madam, because history oh. is what teaches us that they were a fierce uh, warrior race and had to be put down hard so that we could have this grand civilization here today. Yeah, because them and the goblins, they were once a terrible force that wrecked this land, but King William I helped to put them down and that is why we can sit here in comfort and safety today. Warriors. At this, Rihanna, um, ma man, there works very hard to maintain a agreeing looking face when internally at his comments about the wolfkin needing to be put down and the goblins ruining the land. She's like just screaming internally because that just makes her mad because that's what in her, sure, in her experiences and in, in her experiences all humans feel that way about non-humans. So, yes, uh, but she's, but she's she's you know she's she's just she'll just sit there and be like, wow, yeah, uh huh, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, um, from his in his defense though, he did actually fight Wolfkin in battle. He can tell you that they were fierce. They, uh, oh, no, I mean, I, I don't doubt that. You don't see that yeah, out no. of Trilac, but Wolfkin mm -hmm. are, I mean, they're wolves, they're, they're predators. They were the top of their, you know, they were, yeah. they were mighty warriors and they used to have a much stronger presence here until yes. a group of humans washed up on shore and had to fight for their own survival. And that right. meant we had to carve out our own land. Here's something that's <laughs> trying to take it back. Yeah. Yep. But yes, uh, he he doesn't speak as highly of the goblins because nobody speaks highly of goblins. They're just a bunch of uh, uh, ne'er-do-well bandits and rogues. <laughs> no honor to them at all. The wolfmen, they put up a true fight. Yes, well, it seems as though, uh, in general, my experiences in this, in this fair city so far has been there's not a lot of 
true men anyway. And it's because we haven't had a proper war to forge them again. <laughs> I mean, there was it's that. been 10 years since the orcs uh, atta horde attacked. And I will tell you, that young Nestor, now captain, I believe, he proved his mettle in that battle, madam. Hmm, I, I have heard of this this Captain Nestor. Yes. Hopefully Mostly he can help to really... curve the king's scholarly pursuits and get him back on track. Hmm, perhaps. I mean, I mean, there's always somebody who has more sway over the king and he kind of has the king's ear. I mean, if if the king is as much of a scholar as you say, uh, Nestor being the warrior he is, it may, he may not have as much influence on him as you think. Well, that's where we need enemies, madam. We need war. <laughs> uh, hmm. there, there, but there, there's no one left to fight. And he gets a little that bit somber true. at this. We've, mm -hmm. we've proven our might, and no one will challenge us anymore. Takes his long, <laughs> but, sad but isn't, sip isn't of his ale. But in a way, that's not so bad. That means that our children and our families can exist in peace and not always be in fear for their lives. I mean, don't, of course, you mean they I will understand. be soft and they will be well, ill prepared to defend themselves when a new enemy arises because you don't think those necromancers to the South will just stay there. No, one day they will cross that mountain and we need to be ready. Necromancers you say? Uh, yes, the, the people of Alistar. Do you know nothing of this continent, madam? Have you not studied your enemy? Oh, my dear ma'am, I, I apologize. I'm relatively new to the area. I'm not from here originally. Ah, well, you could not tell from your accent, madam. It is, you sound <laughs> like you have been here your whole life. Well, I, I do my best to try to blend in and fit in when I have to be in a new new home. Ah, yes. Well, um, the people of hmm. Alistar is a barren wasteland, and they had to turn to necromancy just to survive. Gee, mm, that sounds dreadful. Ah, well, anyone who lives in that frozen, barren place, where um, have you ever had frost at wine? I do not believe I have. Don't bother. It has absolutely no flavor because it's the only <laughs> thing that grows there. Uh, is flavorless. <laughs> vegetables that they have their uh. zombies tend and then they make it into the least flavorful drink that burns all the way down mm. but Nothing it's the only thing that they can apparently make. No, no comparison to a good dwarven whiskey well a few things do compare to dwarven whiskey that and the walls are their greatest accomplishments to this city <laughs> So, goodness gracious. Yes, I've, I've noticed there seems to be quite the uh, disparity between the the classes of folks in this city and my travels around town. I mean, uh, for the most part, the town is quite pleasant and, you know, very nice. But it seems as though there's definitely a, a lower district that is very much neglected and just sort of left to its own devices, which I hate to say, I find kind of sad. And yes. then you come well, up to this northern part of town and you've got these ostentatious people trying to flaunt all their wealth. Uh, yes, you see, that is the problem with peacetime, madam. The mm -hmm. rich have nothing more to do than to flaunt their wealth and the poor have nothing more to do but to stab each other over what little they have. And so we terrible. don't even have enough soldiers to go in and, and reinstate order in that part of town. Oh, that's quite horrible. I mean, isn't, I mean, I guess my concern, my, one of my major concerns, I suppose, would be if I were King Wilson or anybody, any of his advisors would be being concerned about the population of that area becoming large enough to where if they became truly unhappy that they could rise up and overtake the more civilized part of town. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. Madam, uh, those people are no true warriors. Uh, they're just a bunch of uh, cutthroats who barely know how, which end of a dagger to point put in someone's back. <laughs> yes, cutthroats. <laughs> hmm. 
well, why aren't, why aren't some of these people who have all of this money and all of this wealth, why don't they do something good with it to help the city out and maybe bring up some of the lower people? I mean, I heard this, uh, this uh, oh dear, what is his name again? Um, Pierce, Mr. Pierce. I mean, he seems to have quite the, uh, quite the fortune. Uh, he does have a very nice dog downstairs. <laughs> he, a, he collects weapons as trophies, but not even, a, not like a proper trophy, madam. It's for him, it's just a collectible to hang on the wall. He does not know how to actually use a battle axe. I don't even think he can hold a battle axe. <laughs> Probably not. No, we need a proper war, and that gets everyone united. A common enemy, mm. madam. A common enemy will do more good for a population than a hundred years of peace. Because peace only brings division and infighting. Mm. You are very wise, sir. I have had many years to sit and to refine this philosophy. Oh, please, you couldn't be that old. And he's just going to say, flattery will get you nowhere, <laughs> except for That's... more drinks, and he's... <laughs> well, I've always told flattery can get you everywhere if it's done properly. She just gives him a nice little smile. Yes, flattery and a sharp sword are the only diplomacies that you actually need. The sharp sword is really what's doing it, but you need to have a smile <laughs> on your face so that people know that you won't use it at random. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I never point my sharp sticks at anybody without first smiling and letting them know that I'm going to use it. So, And that is very honorable of you. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. You know, proper duels is another thing that we need to bring back into fashion. You know, look a man in the eye, tell him that you have been wrong, and give him a chance to prove his right in battle. That's interesting. I can't really do that sort of thing anymore. You know, the knee, you see. I can't move oh. like I used to. Oh, but I'm sure you still move quite nicely. Uh, I can move from uh, the stool back to my estate. <laughs> I rely upon the the soldiers and the guards to to do the job now. Pass the torch, as it were. Ah, of course. So, um, Captain, um... Oh, please, I haven't been a captain in years. Uh, Sterling oh, will do just fine. Okay. Thank, then. Thank you. Because I can't um, even remember so how to pronounce his actual last name. I copied it from somewhere, and I don't know how to say it. I thought e you said X -E -T -E -R. Exter. I'm saying Exter. Exter? Yeah. Yeah, it works for me. Okay. That's uh, the problem okay. with making up NPCs. You might want to actually make sure you can pronounce things. Yeah, something like that. Okay. S okay. So, uh, Sterling, um, <laughs> you say your estate. Um, do you, is there a Mrs. Sterling at your estate? Uh, there was once, but sadly uh, she passed away some years ago. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. Uh, that is the way of life, madam. Don't be sorry. We lived a long life together, but uh, sickness uh, took her uh, right, you know, uh, right after my retirement. So I sit here oh, how now unfortunate. and I talk to people. That's just terribly, terribly sad. You finally have the time to spend with your beloved. She's taken by illness. That is, oh, oh my goodness. I just can't even imagine the horror of that. Uh, it, poor, is life, poor madam. Man. it is life, madam. It is life. I know. But it's just not fair sometimes. Um, I assume that you have a caretaker or someone who looks after your household for you. Oh, no. There's nothing there worth taking care of. Uh, a couple of unseen servants keep things clean. Oh. Oh, so is that why you you hang out in this place for the company? Well, 
I like to impart my wisdom onto people who have, you know, to stop by. Because sometimes the soldiers and the guards, they stop by. And, you know, I like to talk to them to uh, fi- keep abreast of what is happening. Oh, I, uh, Mr. Torvo was in recently. And you know, he's actually from nobility. But he gave it all up to become a, a, a dragon slayer or some such. And I said to him the last time he was in town, I said, Torvo, you call yourself a dragon slayer. But no one has seen a dragon in this side of the country in decades. And you know what he <laughs> said to me? He leaned in what? and said, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's so terribly funny. You know, I've heard rumor that there is a dragon. Oh, well, I'm sure that will delight Torvo because he's been, hasn't had enough to fight lately, apparently. And I get that. There's just, just not enough things to fight. We need a proper enemy. <laughs> well, um, I very much enjoyed your company. And the chat has been very, very um, enlightening. I feel as though I've learned an awful lot about this area. Uh, well, then but I, I, I have do done my I... job for the day. <laughs> and you have. You I have deserve well. a drink. Yes, you do. <laughs> I will take my leave and I will leave the tavern. Um, what time of day or evening is this? Uh, we're going to say that it's, uh, it's, it was probably in the afternoon when you were first talking to him. So oh, it, we can still say it's early afternoon or we can skip ahead to any point in time. Okay. Um, so is yeah, there was, anything else you wanted I was trying to, to do? Well, yeah. Well, I was trying to, like, unfortunately, I'm just not very good at coming up with some of these things on the fly. I was trying to think of a way to try to steer the conversation with him to give me more information about that uh, Isaac Pierce, but I was not successful at it. He just didn't seem to be too interested in talking about himself. So. Yeah, he very quickly gets back onto military yeah, matters. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I realized that was a waste of my time. Much else. Right. Um, I suppose since it's still daylight, maybe I will... This is also why our games Uh, don't get anywhere. We spent half an hour on a random guy in the bar. I I know, but it's fun. Anyway, um, (laughs) so this this estate, uh, this house of this collector guy, this uh, Isaac Pierce, where is he located at? Uh, he's going to be in the upper Dell, but I don't really have him like mapped out in the city. Okay. Okay. But he right. has oh, one of fine. the more ostentatious houses. Right. Right. Okay. Are there any <laughs> shops or taverns or anything nearby, or is it pretty much strictly residential? It's pretty, pretty much sad. residential in that area. Um, okay. You know, I'm going to say most of the shops are going to be in the North Galt or in the Crafter Circle. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, I suppose that I will perhaps take a walk over to the Foolish Jackal Tavern and uh, see if uh, I can uh, have a moment of learned time. Okay. Um, he is there. Uh, there's somebody else sitting at the, the, the table with him. But after a moment, you know, they'll get up and leave and you're free to uh, to sit down or if you wanted to try to listen in or anything before you did. Oh, uh, yeah, I might as well do that. I love to be an eavesdropper. <laughs> okay, I thought you might. Uh, go course. ahead and roll a perception. Uh. Okay, well, uh, because with that, you will, you will notice <laughs> that Oddly enough, only like murmured noise comes out of his uh, back, his like around his booth. Uh, oh, that's with, right. I think he's got a warrant, doesn't he? Yes, and you probably would not yes. have realized that except that you rolled a natural 20. Yeah. And as much as I hate to give you nothing, he <laughs> protects his area. I, I don't figured, know. I'll totally I figured understand you would that. like to know that, though. Yes, yeah. So I'm like, ah, oh, damn. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Good to know. But eventually the person gets up and, uh, like I said, if you want to sit down. Yeah, I'll walk over and sit down and remove my my hat so okay. that he knows it's me. 
Uh, he doesn't even seem to be surprised by that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course not. Like always, he it seems like he's only half paying attention to the person who sits down. So, right. you know, once uh, your drink that you never ordered gets brought to you, <laughs> uh, he finally will look up and say, and what can I do for you today, Miss Rihanna? Oh, well, I just thought I would um, stop by and inquire as, um, if uh, you knew of anyone who was um, looking to acquire any interesting items or artifacts. Uh, there's always some, uh, some collectors and some buyers. Do you need a list of names? Um, not right this moment. I'm going to, um, I may be acquiring some items soon-ish. And I just wanted to know if, I, if you, if that when I do, that I would be able to come to you and, uh, find, find a, a buyer or a new home for these items in a rather quick manner. Um. Like I said, I can't guarantee uh, how many of them are buying today, but sure. there's always someone, especially if you're not too finicky about how you sell them. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just I've heard rumor of a certain uh, house that is currently quite vacant, and its uh, owner is off on another uh, business trip, and so... Maybe I'll go take a peek around at what's what's in there and see if there's anything good. And he doesn't really have anything to reply there. <laughs> um, Especially because you know full well he's the one that told you about that place. <laughs> I know. I'm just pull, doing a bunch of shit. So yeah, he's um, he's just you know still paying attention to you, but he's not saying anything. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. And uh, I, this is out of character because my memory is horrible. Um, you had told me the last time that we had had a little interaction that um, when, after he would, like, give or tell people that he knew of somebody if they needed me to do something that they would leave a message somewhere for me and I cannot remember what you had said now. Uh, basically I was just going to say that you know, if there was somebody being sent to you we would figure out how the message would get to you. Uh, oh, whether it was okay. like something in Thieves Can't on a message board. I left oh, it kind of okay. open because you know, again, he more or less you know, will tell people how to reach each other in a discreet right, manner. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, and if I don't say it, then I don't, you know, it was like, you don't have to say, well, I'm running to check the message board every day. Right. Uh, I want, right. I would just tell you, Hey, there was a message for you. Here it is. Okay. okay. Um, shit. Now I can't remember what it was that I was going to ask him. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just ask him. So, since you deal in information, um, uh, I have met a rather chatty old fellow um, who likes to talk a lot about everything and the way things. I used am to afraid be that be. anything that uh, the the former captain is basically common knowledge. He doesn't shut up. <laughs> So I see you know Captain uh, Exter. Okay. I know basically everybody, and I'm afraid that uh, you are, of course, free to share what he knows. But once it reaches him, it's not really exclusive information anymore. Well, I, I didn't think that it was. I just thought it was he was interesting. Oh, that he is. That he is. According to him, we need a proper war to get this city back on track. He has been saying that since the last war, though. <laughs> That's what I figured. So do you have any information that I may be able to, um, you know, purchase from you um, regarding any of the uh, inquiries made either by uh, 
lured Victor Cromwell or any of his associates into trying to find some of these. Uh, oh, God damn it. I forgot what they, what the they were called. Masons. I'm sorry, Andy. Yes, these bone masons. I mean, if. if uh, he will he tell you, him. unfortunately, um, no one except <sighs> for the now missing Baron Belvin really knew much about them. I would actually like uh, to learn more myself uh, um, okay. the only thing that this is stuff that he would have shared with you earlier they okay. apparently originate from the country of Alistar uh, oh, okay. and again uh, what world knowledge you would know is that's where it gets like past the uh, the Rookhelm Mountains it just mm -hmm. gets colder and colder so the people of Alistar are more it's similar to living in uh, Alaska I would say not a lot grows there because the ground is practically it's probably more like Russia in the winter Yeah, that might Siberia. be the better analogy uh, it's yeah. really cold it's really hard to grow anything there that's why necromancy is rumored to be rampant there because okay. and uh, mm -hmm. apparently that is where the bone masons originate from okay so even even learned only knows a little bit about them hmm. okay well i very much am kind of curious as to what happened to lord belvin myself being so you know he was the one responsible for hiring those guys to attack an acquaintance of mine um i don't suppose you would be willing to share information that you may have regarding Lord Belvin and his disappearance with me in exchange for any new information I come up with because I, I would I'm actually going to I think pursue trying to find out what happened Man. Um, I would be fine with exchanging but I don't have very much on me at the moment because no one has asked uh I can attempt to gain some information, but you know, it. So I think what you know is probably what the rest of us know as well. Is just that he just went missing and nobody's seen him for like a week or two, correct? Basically, um, mm. I can attempt to to find out some more information, but it will take time, especially because I don't really have a focus item of his. Ah. Uh, so I am basically item. at the same my chances of finding out are the same as any other uh, mage in the area. What do you need as a focus item? Uh, a, an image of him would help. Uh, something of his, uh, hair and nails for example, would uh, definitely improve my chances of finding anything else about him. Really? Uh, the, Interesting. The standard items you need to look for people. Yes, yes. Um, well, perhaps I can try and obtain something for From you. From a man who's missing? If you find uh, him, then you don't need me to look for him. Ah, uh, yes. But what I'm saying is, uh, he obviously has a mistake here, correct? Uh, he more or less rented a place when he came into town. He didn't live in town. Uh, many of the nobles from you know the outlying cities uh, will come in as part of like paying taxes or when they have something that they want to bring uh, up to the king. Okay. So See, he was that. more of a visiting person. Okay. The problem is that um, when he went missing was when the guards were looking for him, so they know he didn't walk through the front gate. Huh. And uh, there has been a couple of rumors of his sighting, but nothing concrete. And nothing that anyone has ever been able to follow up on. Did his disappearance coincide with when the murders up in the uh, North Gaul area started? He kind of thinks about it. I would say uh, within a couple of days. Uh, if he left town via magic, uh, you know, teleportation or some such. Yeah. But yes, they definitely occurred within the, uh, a few days of each other. And he, he, I have met this man, um, sort of 
peripherally um once yeah, you, and... you were there when he was ranting and raving about yeah, you know, yeah his guards yeah. not being able to properly protect yeah. him and then he threw an absolute fit when somebody dared to deny him what he claimed should yeah just be his. yeah so it's like he seems to be prone to anger fits and kind of temper tantrums like a child i would say that's fair hmm I don't suppose you know of any other known associates here in town. No one that the guards haven't already spoken to. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, well, um, I assume that by now the place that he was renting has been cleared out of his things. Uh, yes. Um, he could, you would know... I mean, again, it wouldn't be any problem for you to know that the, uh, the primary... The guard that he had hired. Uh, uh -huh. I have his card around here somewhere. Yeah. I can't remember his name, but I know who uh, you're talking Lucius about. Lucius Roderick, I believe was his name. He is mm -hmm. um, he's a former soldier, so that's why when they questioned him, you know, they basically accepted his accounting of things because mm -hmm. he left with honors and all that. Uh, so there was no reason to think that he was covering for this man. Because after he okay. left, he became, uh, I guess, a guide and a guard for people in town is a, a pretty okay. safe way to describe it. He That's how he hires himself out as protection for visiting dignitaries. Okay. So kind of like a, kinda like a, a rent-a-CIA guy. Yeah, he's, he's a bodyguard <laughs> for hire. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he... Like I said, he basically, uh, you know, all he could say was that one, you know, uh, he saw the Baron off for the night, uh, and then the next morning he was just gone. And considering huh. that he, you know, he was also the next, that day, the guards were looking for him, it was sort of like, well, he skipped town very quietly, but that's all anybody's got to work with. Mm. Okay. So I'm probably totally going on the wrong direction, trying to link the two things together. Um, okay. Well, if I have any more need of information from you or uh, items to um, shed, I will uh, I'll be in contact with you. I am always here. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to hearing from somebody who may need my skill set. Well, as I said, I am not really a job recruiter, so when they oh, reach out I to know. me... Oh, yes. I know. Well, not everybody have... wants to deal with the larger guilds, after all. Some of them... You know, there are some people who will probably want to go a little... Hey, He's trying not to say cheaper, but he's trying to say, uh, you know, alternative uh, methods. Entrepreneurs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. No problem. All right. I will get up and I will leave there. And okay. before I leave the, the building, I'll slap my hat back on. Hmm. Um, so I guess what I what I need from you as the DM is to know what time of day it is so I can decide what I'm going to do next. Again, because you're, this is a solo session, time can be yes. as fluid as you want it to be. Okay. Uh, do you have something else you want to do or do you want to go straight to breaking and entering? I think we'll just skip to the breaking and entering. Okay. Because in that case, you know, it can be night. Or whatever yes. level of night you want it to be. Dark enough to be able to use my cloak. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the time of day when in the uh, the upper Deld, the magical lights just sort of already kick in. But in the lower side, the cheaper side of towns, uh, you know, there's somebody who's going around lighting the, uh, the lamps along mm -hmm. the streets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So businesses are shutting down. Everyone has already gone home. Uh, okay. It's quiet enough that you can do your bit, your work. Okay. Okay. So I will walk into like an alleyway where it's kind of, you know, away from 
the, the street and I will use my um, cloak to fly up to the top of one of the buildings that I'm in between. Okay. And um, I'll just kind of try to do my whole stealthy flying across a couple buildings at a time and just sort of, you know, making my way towards that direction. And Okay. I won't ask you to roll anything uh, because you already have <laughs> advantage on that. I'm okay. just rolling to see if any passersby, because they pretty much need a natural 20 to catch you. Yeah. Um, but That's why I stay up there. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, with that cloak and your natural skill, there's no point in asking you to roll anything. Okay. Uh, it All would right. literally take somebody just looking and seeing the giant bat flying around to care. <laughs> so, you know, until the day I tell you, what was your AC again? It's just assumed <laughs> that you get away with it. Alrighty. Um, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I I'm a, my reconnaissance. I have figured out uh, which side of the house would be have like the least um, visibility, so mm -hmm. I would have the most uh, cover of an upper floor that I would try to attempt a window thing like I did with the uh, Nestor place. Yes, and uh, there's. I'm going to say that there's uh, only a couple of upstairs windows, but there's one that you are comfortable with working with. Okay. So. And I will make an attempt at it. Okay. Uh, what kind of attempt um, do you want to make? Well, I guess lightly pull on the window to see if it opens on its own or if it's locked. Uh, you can tell that it is locked, so you'll need to, you know, do something to okay. open it. Yeah, I still don't know where my thieves' tools are at. I don't think I ever put them in my inventory. Okay. Isn't that terrible? Yes, it um, is. So you you're a horrible just, person. You want, <laughs> you you're you're a terrible a player who never pays attention to things, so just roll your dexterity <sighs> and add on the, the the appropriate bonus. Oh, shit. Balls. Uh, so that'd be a total of 10. <laughs> okay. I guess because I'm just adding my proficiency bonus to that. Uh, I believe that's my right. My dex is a plus two. Yeah. So, yeah, it's only a ten. Well, I'm going to say that it is a window, so it isn't really that difficult. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're sliding the whatever particular tool it is. Uh, yeah, I, I know I would call it a Slim Jim or something of that nature. But yeah. anyway, yeah. you're sliding that in. You're working the lock. And you actually hear the click when the trap goes off. Make a constitution save for me. Shit. You didn't, didn't look even traps. look. Oh, oh God. God. I didn't look through traps. And this is where we had to meet her end. So your <laughs> this mist comes out and hits you right in the face. And you feel your whole body lock up. And oh, shit. then, yeah, that is the thought that's going through your head as gravity kicks in. And you fall. Oh, God. You take six points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. And you are stuck there for the next minute because uh, with that save, I'm not going to give you any chance of, you know, it takes a minute to wear off. Oh, yeah. But oh, nobody yeah. heard. I'm just laying there. Nobody heard the, the loud noise. And because you were paralyzed, you couldn't scream in pain <laughs> uh, you only took six like, points so, but oh I was like mother <clears throat> mm -hmm. so Shit. Uh, like I said nobody heard anything and you were literally laying there for the better part of a minute and nobody came to looking for you so you're pretty sure you're safe I mean that was that was horrible by the way that was, oh it was just God, terrible was like, I love it I didn't even the one rogue who doesn't check for traps. I know. <laughs> Why do you think I've been so hesitant to do this? You I never know, look for traps. I know, I know, I am sorry. I'm a horrible you, player. Yeah, th in fact, this is not uh, a solo mission. This is me teaching her how to play a rogue. <laughs> well, because I was like, I didn't think that the windows would be trapped. I thought maybe they'd be warded. But maybe you didn't look for like an alarm either. thing. Oh, well, okay, yeah, you're right. I didn't. That's I why I asked you, what are you well, doing? Okay. okay, here's the problem. In my head, I made the assumption that if I touched the window, I would set off a ward. And when nothing happened, I figured it was good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a valid assumption. She's, yeah, she's rusty. 
Okay, it's been a while since she's really truly done this kind of thing. And after what happened with the Nestor thing, and knowing that she got away with it, but then still got caught, I think she's just a little um. <sighs> well, like I said, yeah. Anyway, nobody, so nobody heard the uh, the full grown tiefling. I'm not even <laughs> gonna guess it weight of a full grown tiefling because I know I don't like to give away my weight, and I'm an I'm an adult man. <laughs> But anyway, nobody heard the the sack of flesh the hit the ground. Mm, so, the flesh the what ground. do you want to do? Well, I'm going to wait until I'm not paralyzed anymore. And after a minute, you find the the rigidity goes away, <sighs> and you're just left there thinking, "Oh Shit, God, I'm, was... I'm glad nobody oh, yeah. actually saw that." Yeah, that was the thing. I was more worried about mm -hmm. making a fool of myself and the fact that I just got hurt. Just know you know. that you can hear phantom laughter in your head. Yeah. yeah. Like Malik saying, that was uh -huh. the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I know. I know. And if only he was Because I don't I'd know who else from your past to use against you in this case. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, well, with that, now that I know that it was trapped and it went off, I don't know if that means it'll go off again. So I'm going to go up to that window again. Okay. And this time I'll actually check it for traps. Okay, well, you know that there is a trap, obviously. So okay, but I can, will, I figure, can I figure I will, out how to disable it? I will give you a, a advantage on disabling it because you know it's there. So okay. that's, that's your thieves' tools again. Which I don't have in here. Well, you know what I mean. Roll dexterity yeah, and yeah. add <laughs> your proficiency to it. Jesus Christ. Good God. I mean, I gave you advantage for still. Okay, so that's a 16, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Because, good God, the dice are against you. I so, know. I get the one good roll, and then, oh, nope, yep. made a bad choice. Now we're just going to okay. curse you. You know, you're right. I think roll 20 knows. It's I I it's say wrong. it's the dice know the story yeah. better than we do. I know. Because okay, anyway. I can roll here, and I will promise you, you'll get a 20, or I'll roll the D100, and it'll be a 99 when something major <laughs> needs to happen. So... <laughs> It's, okay. It's, it's going back to some old cartoon. It's the heart of the dice. They know. Yes. It knows. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you rolled high enough. You're you're working with it. You feel the the tension on the spring as you disable the trap, okay. and because you did roll well enough for that, and the window opens up to you. Okay. And now I can moment, bring you over listen. to the the proper map. Bom, 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 bom. You are upstairs. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we're going to say you are over here in the the bedroom because the you Oops. know he wants the the morning sunlight to wake him up. Of course. Okay. You can put yourself you on the map if you actually want to move around. Okay. 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 Give me a second. Uh, All right. It's uh, no rush. It was just an option. I know. I know. Um. Well, shit. Hold on. Okay, so I'll I'll just be describing the scene to you a little bit more. Um, everything inside this living room or this bedroom, whereas in the Nestor house it was it nice work. but functional, this is lavish. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell this is some way when he brings someone to his bed, they are just as <laughs> impressed by the silk sheets and oh, the uh, the, uh, the gnomish rug mm. as they are anything else. Mm. Let's see. Oh, I God, will let he's one you of those. infer what else they may or may not be impressed with in that room. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Lot, lots of shiny things are just compensating. Anyway. Um. You know what? I tried to bring her out and it didn't work. Um, I don't know why. Let me try. Oh, there, oh, there it you is. Go. Cool. It didn't work before. It didn't work before. Okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah, Which you'll window? be you'll be like right up here. I'm doing the ping. Uh, I didn't see it. Hold on. I'm having trouble getting this to adjust I, to I'm a size. I'm just gonna move right you here. over real right quick. Over. You do it. Thanks. Because uh, thanks. It's... Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm yeah. on the struggle bus today. Okay, so today, that's the window, yeah. huh? Today. Yeah, just today. Only mm -hmm. today. Okay. Okay. Critical rolls so, in two hours, so let's get some action. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so um, we got priorities here, uh, people. 
I know. Well, I haven't even watched the last one or two episodes, so okay, I'm. Okay. Well, then I won't tell matter. you about it. Yeah. Thank but, you. Oh my god. Um. Oh shush. Uh. Okay. Um. So I'm sitting here crouched in the window, and mm. I look in there, and I do not see anybody. Obviously. No. You can give me a perception check if we can see want to see what you hear. Okay. You do really well on that one. Uh, yeah. It's it's quiet in this house. You. Okay. All right. Well, I will. I will enter the room, mm -hmm. and I will do a quick search, and I will look for anything obvious that might be valuable, you and I'll look see for any chest? hidden places. Yeah. 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 Uh, that chest is the most obvious. Uh, if you want to like search his drawers and things like that, uh, yes. There was nothing. No hidden compartments that you can find. Okay. Although, if you want to give me an investigation check to be a little bit more thorough on that one, right? That's what I was going to okay. ask. Okay, yeah, um, I'll still say the same thing. The The chest is okay. the only thing you saw. Uh, we're going to say that you can apply that investigation to uh, this, to, uh, you know, the chest also. And okay. you can see that there is some kind of award on that. But you have no proficiency in Arcana, so you don't really know what kind of spell might be You mean held. this one? You mean the, the chest up here at the top? Yes. Okay. There is a word on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, you, so you have no idea yeah. what that means. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I don't have any... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't have any proficiency, but I mean, I can still try, couldn't I? Yeah, you can... Uh, I mean, think about all the years she spent with Silas and Zohara. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say you have to try a disadvantage. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I don't know shit. Yeah, okay. you, you know about wards, uh, glyph of warding, because you yeah. ha um, it's like what Viserys put on his house. You right. know that anything, that they can put whatever they want inside the ward. Okay. Um, perhaps I'll peek under the bed mm -hmm. and look for any sort of boxes or anything, maybe shoved underneath there, um, go on looking uh, on the walls, like just kind of, you know, check in for like, trap doors so to speak and extra compartments and such that's what I'm looking for okay um, no you don't see anything like that in this room okay well this room is useless to me then um, I mean you can still uh, try the chest and see what happens <laughs> after the window thing just saying it's I mean it's warded I want so you to know what I'm your assuming options are. it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it trapped or is it just warded? You only, you can only tell that there is a ward. There appears to be no trap on it, no mechanical trap. The window okay. did have a mechanical trap. This one is just a ward. Okay. And again, based on past <sighs> experience, that could be anything from an alarm to an attack. Okay. Well, I do have evasion, so if I open it and it throws something at me, I have a better chance of avoiding it. So what the hell? I'm going to open it. Yeah, try. sure. Okay, go ahead and roll with uh, your uh, your lock picks. Uh, so uh, that'll be 15. Okay, that is enough, and you open up, and you see all these bars of gold... And make another constitution save. Constitution save? The trap goes off. Okay. Hey. You got lucky and you feel like uh, this poison spray comes out of it, but you you managed to withstand it this time and you did not fall unconscious. Hmm. Um, this chest so I, that, contains... That, that I couldn't have used the evasion... No, because this was oh, wasn't a death this was thing. A, yeah. like a yeah, this was more of a, a spray and not got it. you know so. got it. But you you got it, so don't worry about it. Yay! And okay. That's when you see that this chest is filled with bars of gold. Dear God, uh, I'm loading that shit into my bag of holding. Okay, that your bag of holding uh, holds what five hundred pounds. Sure. Uh, I, 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 I think that's right, because I did look into it. Okay, then I will go ahead and tell you, and I will send you these numbers later if you remind me. <laughs> okay. 
each uh, a bar of gold is worth about 50 coins and the uh, no way uh, maybe it's worth 250 anyway the point is that there are 50 bars of gold those those are worth a grand total of 12,500 gold coins to you go ahead and write that down oh my god okay uh, now I'm I did at one point have the weight down. We're going to say that they weigh... I can weigh... put it in my thing and it'll tell me how much it weighs if I put it in my sheet here. Uh, okay, if it does, because, you know, I don't want you walking around with a thousand pounds when you shouldn't. I think they weigh about five pounds each, but I, I'll i have to check D&D Beyond, which is, you know, my source for all these things. Well, okay, so when I put in that much gold pieces, it says... Well, I don't know if that was just the gold or everything else, but... It's probably it counting put, everything else, so let's go with that for right now. Well, it says 309.8 pounds. Okay. But that's in the bag of holding, so that has no effect on me. Yeah, um, we're going to say that... You know what, give me just a sec to uh, to bring this up, and because D&D Beyond does have this statistic somewhere... Uh, okay. And I, this is like the only note I didn't have for myself. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, bars of gold. Bars of gold weigh five pounds and are worth 250 gold. Okay. So that means you had 50 bars times five, 250 pounds. Okay, that's 250 pounds. Yeah. But okay. well, that goes into the so bag of holding. That is half of your bag of holdings weight right there. Okay. So just keep that in mind if you see anything you like more. 250 pounds of gold. Yeah. Keep that in mind if you see anything you like better. That you, oh, know, yeah. you have to oh, maintain yeah. this weight. Oh, yeah. Because you. Okay. this is just his bedroom. I know. I know. I'm excited. Okay, anyway. um, <clears throat> Sorry not trying to get too excited here uh sure um okay i will then go to the door okay it's, and... it's unlocked it opens easily okay and i guess i'll walk out into this room and this is where he has around. hunting trophies yeah uh, whether or not he actually hunted them or he just right. paid someone because one of those a couple of them are dinosaur heads for crying out loud yeah, I was like, where is the hell? You know, did that it's possible come from? he, you know, somebody handed him the magic wand to shoot them. Right. Uh, but from from what you've understood, this man probably isn't a hunter. Okay. But well, yes, I will check each of these places where they're on the wall to see if they are hiding a secret vault of some sort. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you that no, you won't find any vaults oh. behind them. Uh, he thought okay. his, you know, gold was safe in behind that ward. And I'll be honest, you know, if you had rolled a little bit lower, you would have been knocked out for 24 hours. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but you did really, you, you know, you beat it by at least two, so. we. But yeah. Okay. That, that was his guard you know, for that gold. Well, it's mine now, bitch. <laughs> Uh, um, okay, so there's nothing good in here. I will move over to this entryway. Uh, and again, it's, you know, this is where people gather to hear all the stories they want to tell each other. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty much what you see on the map now. There's nothing special yeah. about that. Okay, I'm going to check the fireplace, the mantle. I'm checking everything. I'm looking for any place that something else could be hidden. Okay. Buttons, hinges, anything. Go ahead and make uh, your investigation roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, this is, eh. a, this is a pretty standard fireplace. Okay. Um, so is there anything sitting out that looks like it might be an no, interesting art? It was, no. uh, I mean, just the bearskin rug you're standing on. Nah. Uh, it's a, it's a nice rug. <sighs> okay. The the chairs won't fit into your bag. Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not interested in uh, furniture. I didn't okay, think you I'm, were. Yeah, I will go over to this room, to okay. this door. 
and, and again the door uh is not locked it opens there's no problem okay. there and then you step I'll into the weapon the armory collection Ooh. Um, there what you see is basically what is there uh there are short swords broad swords there's mace spears uh suits of armor uh, some of them are very jeweled. Some of them are more functional. Uh, I mean, it's it's a very nice looking short sword. Okay. And any any cool looking beggars? Um, I'm gonna say that yes, there is. Uh, I think, yeah, you know, like this right over here, uh, <gasps> not like a pair of daggers, unfortunately. Right. Uh, oh, sorry. But that right there. That, that's like that's just a nice looking dagger it's very ornamental looking uh mm, like i said not very functional well here's what i'm going to say because again oh, sorry. uh you can tell that these things they range some are very functional weapons some mm -hmm. are very highly jeweled you know that mm. those jewels have mm -hmm. value but it mm -hmm. was probably more you can tell there's no there's nothing there's nothing uniform about this collection. These are just various weapons. So mm. um you know, like some collectors like a museum might say these are the ceremonial weapons and then over here right. are the battle weapons. He has right. no distinction. Okay. They're just everywhere. Uh yeah, okay. that, that's really the short version of saying it is Okay. For example, um, the shield well, up here, it looks uh -huh. like it's made of different types of metals and it has nice mm -hmm. gems in it. But it does look solid. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Anything with gems in it. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm going to shove in my bag. Okay. I will. Uh, I have <laughs> these somewhere in my notes. So just say that. We'll say that weapons tend to be like what? About five pounds. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you can basically take every weapon off the wall. And we'll figure that out a little bit later. But when you start taking weapons off the wall, you hear the clank as a suit of armor that apparently I had left as a piece of the map. Let me change that. Uh, starts to move because this should have been a token. Let me change that over. Because uh, the animated armor starts to approach you. Roll initiative. Ah. Oh, yay! God damn it. Again, I just, uh, is. I was just looking around. I said, which are the jeweled ones? And then, That's you, okay. and then you said, you're, okay, I start sticking them in my bag. Uh, yeah. let me... So I rolled a 13. Okay, just a sec. I'm bringing up the uh, the stats for the thingamabobber. Uh, uh -huh. And he rolled a 16. So. Fuck. Uh, we're going to say All that right. he can't quite get to you yet because he can only come over here. But he's, he's moving for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now your turn. Um. Oh, wait a minute. He can only move 25 feet. Let me move him back a little bit. I want to be fair <laughs> in this fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, in this fight? Well, right. I, I want to be fair about everything. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, well, for the sake of this, I want you to make a list of how many things I might have been able to shove in my bag before I noticed them doing this. Okay. Because, uh, God damn it, I will get out of here with something. Yeah. I I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> give, me, give me a dexterity check, and then we'll see how many items you would have collected. Okay. Based off that. God, I'm just like straight up turned into just a fucking petty thief. Oh, that sucks. Okay, I'm going to say that you had your option of two items before he... Okay. Can, uh, that's before he... Like, you pick the first one up and you're heading for the second one when you hear it move. Mm -hmm. um, you So you point to me, like, which items you want, and I'll start taking notes so that I can, you know, double check my records <sighs> later. Um, and he hasn't well, gotten to you yet, so you have time to grab more. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I obviously, after I would have looked around, I would have gone for the things that had the most gems on them, so. Okay. Um, I can't tell for sure, so you would kind of have to 
determine that for me. All right. Uh, we're going to say that the uh, the dagger in front of you was one. Okay. Uh, and I'm just sort of making a note of that. Like I said, the shield over here, it had uh, several gems. Uh, it mm -hmm. also looked to be functional. Uh, again, you, you have experience. You think maybe this thing might have had magic, but without a proper inspection, kind of hard to tell. Right. So right. if you want to say that you ran over and grabbed that one. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, so I probably would have gotten... Well, I'll put you over here, and that's when the thing started to move for you. Oh, uh, okay. So this okay. is where we're at at the moment you rolled initiative. Um, okay. Suit of armor. Do you have a weapon on him? Uh, it... I'm trying to think. No, it doesn't have a weapon, but it is animated armor. Okay. I don't know if you've ever run into one of those before. You're welcome to make nope. a history check to see. Sure. Sure, let's do that. Nope. Uh, you know it's a walking suit of armor. Yeah. Um, alrighty. Well, this kind of sucks. Um... Shit balls. Um. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you, like I say you got a choice, you can grab <sighs> one more item. Uh, I'm going to say like there's that short sword next to you that you could easily okay. have snagged uh, on your way okay. out the door, but you kind of have to run past him to get to the door. Yeah. Or you yeah, can that's go, what I was kind of thinking. Uh, let's put it this way: there's there's a bedroom door that you came from. Then you uh -huh. see this door over here. You right. could run that way to escape him. But well, that was sort of what I was thinking. I was going to try to dart across the room to this okay. one. Uh, do you want to pick up that other short sword just for my records? Or this are you just going to run for it? This one? Yeah. Because it's, it's like, you know, five feet away from you. Yeah. Or you yeah, can focus also... on running. Well, yeah, I'll grab that short sword, but okay. I think I don't think I'll stick it in my bag. I think I'll keep it in my hand just in case he uh, comes come, okay. comes close enough to me. Because I don't think my rapier is going to do much against this thing. Mm. And I'm pretty sure I can I can use short swords, but perhaps uh, I'm wrong yes, on that. Yes, a rogue can use short swords. Okay, I, so I will just keep that in my hand so that if I have to, I can okay. whack him uh, with that. I'm going to say that you know you you fought people in armor before. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that you know, you're you're pretty confident whatever weapon you have in your hand is probably going to be about as effective as the next. Okay. I mean, it's not like you're a barbarian who could crush the thing, you know, with his hammer. Uh, right. But you, you're pretty confident in your ability to fight this thing if you have to. Okay. Well, I mean, as try, much as but... anybody can fight a construct. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Um, sure. So I grabbed that and. Okay, but now that we're like so picking up things is a free action, but you know, now you need to decide right. what your action is going to be. You can attack yeah. it or you can run from it. I am. You know, I'm just going to try to run to avoid him. Okay. So you're going to use your whole action to dash across the room? Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's what, 60 feet? Yeah. Can Is that uh, vertically also? I mean, horizontally? I'm going to say that we'll, we'll say that, yes, you can, you can do that. Um, I don't know what cunning action actually allows for a rogue. I think that's mostly like disengage or... That's as far as I can get with 60 feet. Okay. So let me see, because now it is his turn, and you are just close enough that he can get to you and make his uh, his two attacks. Uh, and both of them were pretty bad. Uh, what's your AC? <laughs> I don't know. Let me check. Well, I let's wear put it this way: leather. unless it's an eleven, you were able to dodge both of these attacks. Oh, I have a 14. Okay, so this thing swings at you kind of, you know, lumbering slow uh, fist attacks and just completely misses you. Awesome. Okay. Well, in that case, uh... Hmm. 
you know what? I am going to take a chance and just continue to run. Okay. I will, you know, I know he gets an attack of opportunity, but that's only one, well, right? Yes. Uh, again, don't you have something like cunning action disengage? Or even oh, disengage as a free action? Yeah, you're right. Cunning action, yeah. Because that's like a bonus action, so you could... Yeah, it's a bonus action. Yeah. So as a bonus action, yes, I can use disengage and then... And then uh, run another 60 feet? Uh, well, actually, dash is part of the cunning action. Okay. So So I, I can only either disengage or dash. Well, I mean, okay. Um, th and this is the way I understand it. Cunning action is a bonus action, correct? Yes. Okay. So you use that and then you use your action to dash 60 feet. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't well, realize that. Uh, or, you know, we could reverse time just a little bit because, you know, I don't understand rogues. If you were running before and you use your action to run... You know that was mm -hmm. that was sixty feet, and then you could use your your uh, cunning action to run another thirty feet. So we could rewind time just a little bit and say you are already over here uh, before okay. he ever moved for you. Oh well, either way, he missed me, so I was yeah. Just I'm just like, I'm just trying yeah. to understand how yeah. you know your combat will work because uh, let me um, see because yeah, you would. You know, also at this point, you're outside his physical walking range. He's kind of slow. Right. And I shut the door behind me. Because okay. I don't know if he's and, able to open it. But yeah, if not. you use everything you have to run, you can apparently move about 90 feet per round. Holy shit balls. But okay. that is, you know, completely running, not paying attention to anything, but you're running. Um, well, I mean, no, nah, I don't think I would just well, it's run like, and not you know, pay if attention. You're, if so. you're walking carefully, you're moving at half speed. Uh, right, right. If you're running, well, I mean, then I, you're. I, you oh, yeah. Like, well, I run to get past him. Once I'm through the door, I shut the door. Yeah. Okay. And just kind of look around to see if I can find anything to put in front of the door, which uh, clearly there's nothing there. No, this is a pretty empty room, and he'll move. You know, you can hear the footsteps as he's moving. Okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, use my movement to get further away towards what looks like stairs. Okay. So you go down the stairs. Let me move you over to the new map. And you will be right in front of these stairs. Let me just uh, drop you back onto the map. And you find yourself in more of a kitchen area now. Okay. My goodness. Uh, yeah. Catch breath. Think, holy shit, think about this a little better. Maybe you should just leave, you know, those things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I look around. It's a kitchen. I don't think there's anything worth spending my time in here on. Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. nice dining room. There's a stove type of thing, yeah. wash basins, a few pictures on the wall. But okay. nothing spectacular. Okay. I will stop at this door. Mm -hmm. I will... Check it for traps and listen for other things. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll say give me... Uh, let's do investigation and then perception. Just so... Okay, no traps on this door. And you don't hear anything. Uh, the, the stomping upstairs, it seemed to have stopped once you got, you know, far enough away from it. Mm -hmm. It seems to have lost you and quit moving. Okay. Okay. All right, I will push on the door to see if it opens. Uh, yes, it will open just fine. Okay. And uh, what do I see in here? Uh, these are statues and works of art. Hmm. Hmm. I think those would be too difficult to get rid of. Yeah, um, you're you're pretty sure they weigh a few hundred pounds each. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean the statues. No, I'm just more like even. It's like, I feel like that's kind of hard to get rid of at times. Yes. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this is sure I could cut them out of the frames and roll them up, but, oh, you know, sure. what am I going to do with them? Yeah. But, um, you know, especially, we'll also say that selling art is the sort of thing where it's pretty subjective. You got to find the person who wants it and thinks it's worth yeah. something. Yeah. And if it's no, too it's well known, then you got another problem of it's a well known piece of art. Right. And I know this. Yeah. 
Um, okay, then I will move down here and uh, check this door again. Okay, and... Go ahead and give me the, the usual rolls. Okay, there is still wow. no sound anywhere in this house. You think maybe you hear, like, you know, scratching of a rodent or something. Yeah. Uh, but the, the door is completely and totally safe to open. <laughs> Somehow I don't believe you when you say it that way. But that's what your investigation told you. I know, I know. Like I said, I still have the short sword in my hand. I'm going to push the door with the sword. Okay. Uh, you're able to, you know, get the door to open with no trouble. Okay. And once it's open... Can I just peek my head in and see if I see anything without walking through the door just yet? Uh, you see, you know, more statues uh, <sighs> and works of art. All you right, know. I'll walk into the room. Okay. Uh, again, there's like some nice rugs and you can see like, you know, <sighs> uh, some of these also look like you know, like once uh, definitely a statue. Another one looks like it might be some very ornamental type of art. Uh, uh -huh. Again, it's sort of the problem of even if you thought you could sell something like this, you yeah. know, what's this? Uh, it's I don't really have a note for it, so it's probably just a <laughs> random. It's just a random okay. thing I put as decoration. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, so everything in here is either too big or too difficult to get rid of from what I know of how these things work. Mm, yeah, so let's, I'm just sort of trying to scan than... my uh, notes again, yeah. but I, you can, you, you're of course welcome to do a proper search of the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will do that. I will, I will do okay. an investigation of the room. And I'm just... Mother blanker. Alright, I'm just going to assume that when you do this, it's a uh, like you're you're walking along the walls, type of uh, you know checking everything for mm -hmm. uh, checking everything for everything, like mm -hmm. lifting up the rugs and things to see what's <laughs> underneath them. It's like I don't see anything. Yeah, and uh, hmm. then you you know like you you check this big carpet right here, and then it makes an attack to try to smother you. Uh, ah, dear God, no! Does a 14 get by your armor? I have a 14. Okay, so it uh, it starts to wrap around you in an attempt to smother you. Uh, you do have a sword in your hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait a minute. Actually, on this, this would be a dexterity to get out of it. My bad. Dex saving throw? Yeah, it's trying to grapple you. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, really? You... That's the best I could do? Well, it was enough. Wow. This thing, it starts to, you know, reach up to wrap around and you dive back right quick. Mmm. How many goddamn things in his house? Okay. I know. It's like he protected his house. I know. Like, wow. Yeah. Um, because I rolled so shitty on my investigation, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Uh, is there no other exit out of here other than the one I came through? Nope, just the one. Okay, well, I'll go back into this room shut the door. Okay, uh, it doesn't seem to be able to follow you. That's good. There's no other exits out of here either. Well, there the is a front through? door. Uh, you just can't oh, tell yeah. because of the way I put the map together. Ah, okay. And we'll say yeah. that there are, you know, like, windows downstairs, so... Uh -huh. If you want to go through the front door, you can. <laughs> well, I will check to see if it's locked. And I don't know why it would be trapped from the inside, but I'm, I'm like, not taking any chances anymore because I'm done with this. Okay. So I will check it for traps. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to say no traps. Uh, did you want, did you search this room, by the way, just out of curiosity? Uh, no, because we I just kind of said it was, it was things that you couldn't move. All right. Yeah, I was like, yeah, uh, this is too big you know, stuff. And I was the, like, nah. the door doesn't seem to have any traps on it. Okay. Is it locked? Uh, when you try to open it, you realize that there is an arcane lock on it. And without, you know, the <sighs> talisman to 
to open it. Yeah. You're going to need to find an alternate route. Nice. Okay. Well, I'll check a window, wherever there's a window. Okay. I guess it's, pro it's probably got the wards too, doesn't it? Uh, you can double check. And... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the downstairs windows are warded. So those can't be opened from the inside either. Uh, only by the you know the, a person who has the the charm that lets them open it. Okay. Guess I'm going back upstairs. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Shit. Yep. Yep. My only way out is to get past him. Mm-hmm. I left the window open in that bedroom I came in. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to this door, and I'm going to listen. Uh, and you don't hear anything. Uh, okay. In fact, when you open it, you'll see that he returned to his proper space. Uh, okay. after the threat was gone. So when I walk in the room, does that activate him again? Not right away. Not right away? Um, okay. Do I have... If I do my running, I can get to that other door mm -hmm. without stopping. Yep. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bolt across this room. Okay. Right straight through you know the what? door. Just for the fun of it, go ahead and give me a dexterity check to make sure that you know, <sighs> that you I don't, don't trip and fall on my face because yeah, I have those. <sighs> you know, it's been happening. A dex check. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Jesus. So you uh, you're, you're keeping your eyes on this thing and you slam yourself <laughs> into the door. Go ahead and take three more points of bludgeoning damage. Because you just run headlong into the door. <laughs> but because you didn't take lock. anything off the wall, it doesn't seem to trigger. God damn it. <laughs> All right, well, then I'm just going to make my way back to the bedroom. Okay. And I'm going to go back to the window. Okay. And I'm going to look out the window and make sure there's nothing going on outside. Uh, actually, when you get to the room, you notice that the window... Uh, no way, you disabled the, the trap, so the window is still yeah. open. Uh, okay, all right, in that good. case, just give me a perception to make sure that you think okay. everything is clear. Yep, everything is clear. Okay. So, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to put the sword in my bag of holding. Okay. And because I don't really have any other weapons on me that I had out. I mean, I keep like my daggers on my belt on the back of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my bag to where it needs to be. And I'm going to grab my cloak and I'm going to turn into a bat and I'm going to fly back to the manor. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just bring this back over to the, uh, the city map then since you've left this one behind. All right. And yeah, you were able to do that. You have a large sum of gold on you. But now I gotta figure out how to get rid of without it being traced. <laughs> well, uh, the thing is, you you do know that, uh, especially rich people tend to mm -hmm. deal in bars of gold as opposed to gold coins. So, right. Uh, it w it won't be hard for you to find a shop that will take them. There's there's no. I mean, they do have like you know an insignia on them but mm -hmm. you you don't really think that's going to be a problem it just yeah. means that you know just don't walk up to somebody and say all right well well even if you did all you gotta do is say well you were dealing with this company and they paid mm -hmm. you in bar gold bars that's true yeah okay awesome that was um fun <laughs> yep and now you get the paranoia of wondering to yourself, what did I leave behind if that was in the first room? I know. I was like, I this is like, that was for me for right now. That was enough. Okay. That was, I mean, because 
I, it's like I kept thinking he must have had cool stuff, but I wasn't ever able to find any hidden doors or rooms or anything. So yeah, I know. Well, yeah. I mean, because I, we we know, got time. If you wanted to say that you checked downstairs one more time, because well, if I, you didn't hear anything, you know, you could have you know checked a different room and come back and looked again. I'm saying yeah. like we got it an hour. If you want to do a little more. Okay. What the hell. Okay. Because you just want me to die. Well, there's that. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with the downstairs map because. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, so, like I said, yeah, that's cause... that's the fun thing about doing a solo session. You don't have to worry about consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's we'll see. When I came into here, I didn't really do an investigation into the kitchen area. Uh, no, I don't believe you did. I just kind of you looked really around, only checked like, this yeah. room with the the smothering yeah. rug. That was the only one you yeah. looked at. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess when I came out of there, I would have spent. Let's say that I spent some time and checked out this room a little more thoroughly. Okay. Um, if you wanted to say that you're really taking your time and being thorough about it, we'll I'll mm -hmm. give you advantage on it. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. I think I should have just gone home. I mean, we, we can go back to that. I just wanted to say that, you know, you can leave now and take what you got, or you can put it all on the line for what's behind the mystery door. <laughs> the mystery door. I don't see a mystery door. Yeah, that's sort of the problem. You can't find a mystery yeah. door. I know. I can't find one. I couldn't. Gee, many Christmas. It's almost like saying I don't know my ass from a hole in the ground anyway yeah, i mean it's an, you know and you're one of the few rogues who doesn't go out and pick up things like what is it, the wand of secrets <laughs> i don't know anything about that i i saw it somewhere because i was watching somebody else's video wand of secrets <sighs> actually tells you where secret doors are oh my god but, well yeah but anyway yeah uh do you want to check yeah. the other room uh you said you didn't yes, look in the kitchen so i'll go to the Okay. Kitchen or whatever. I mean, you can still is. go I'll upstairs and take your chances in you know the the armory. True. I'll go ahead and check the kitchen anyway. You know, might as well. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna be like, all right, okay. what am I missing here? Okay. Because supposedly this guy has stuff. I am going to go ahead and allow that you know as an advantage, but you're not finding anything inside of this room. It looks like. You know, you're guessing that he collected, uh, you know, various weapons that are a lot of ornamental mm -hmm. type of things, and then mm -hmm. some large statues that even your strongest friend would have trouble moving. Mm hmm. That's in the dining room. Uh, this is. We're gonna say this is a dining room in the kitchen. Okay. I in, in real life, there's probably a wall between them, but I do mm -hmm. simple maps. Yeah, it's fine. <sighs> I'm gonna walk back out here because I'm like, I, I must, I have to be missing something. Okay. Uh, uh, well, gonna... explain the logic to me. What do you feel that you're missing? Well, like it's a large room, and mm -hmm. you know he's rumored to have cool stuff, and I haven't seen anything other than a couple of things, which okay. is why it's like I've got to like check behind the art that's on the walls to see if there's anything there, you know. See so, if there's anything that moves on the statues or anything that might. It's like I feel like I'm missing something. Okay, if you want, you can you can go really slow, and I will let mm -hmm. you do like a, an individual check on each wall if you want to. Okay. Just like I'm going to start, you know, checking each statue. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. let you go. I'll let you go piece I'll start by with piece. That one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, I will do that. All right, let's do this. Uh, there is nothing unusual on this statue. It is, it's sort of plain stone, nicely made. Okay. Check this one out. Uh, I'm gonna say with that, you're checking this one, and then you, when you're behind it, you kind of bump into the wall, and you realize that the secret panel was hidden behind the wall. That's why I missed it. Oh yeah. So All right. now we can go into that room where you see a trap door. <sighs> okay. Well and now I will go ahead and tell you that no the, the trap door is not locked. I if you want to open it and go downstairs, I'll bring you to the basement. 
but don't I need to check to make sure it's not trapped? Uh, I'm going to, well, in this case, we're, for this one, we're going to say that he assumed that his well-hidden wall was the safety measure. Okay. So uh, that's what I'm saying, if you want to go downstairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 because I'm looking to get killed, so. Yeah. Okay, so when you get down here, there is a lot more. Uh, Whoa! There's artifacts. Uh, there oh. are. There's more statues. You see a couple of chests. Viserius might even be nervous about what he sees because, as you can tell, there's different altars from different uh -huh. places. Uh, yeah. Again, there's no real rhyme or reason, but this is the stuff this guy decided to hide. Holy hell. And let's, let me drop you back into the uh, the map just for the sake of it helps sometimes to say where uh, you're at. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so when I get down here, is it dark or is it lit up? Or uh, We're going to say that because you have dark vision, everything right. looks gray to you, but you can see, you know, enough of the room. Uh, okay. Okay. Are there any, is there anything on the walls that could, like, be lit to give a little light? Uh, yeah, we'll say that there's probably a torch around here because, you know, this is probably run by a human. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can light the room up. Yeah, I just yeah, I just kind of want so I could like maybe look at details a little better. At some yeah, of this stuff. Uh, yeah, that's that's totally possible. Okay, so obviously because there's so much stuff, I'm gonna really really take my time. Okay, where do you want to start? I will start right here with this bad okay. looking thing because that's scary. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll your investigation. I'm going to go ahead and count everything at advantage because you said you're taking your time and inspecting oh, yeah. one piece at a time. Yeah, I'm checking everything. It's, it is a pretty heavy statue, and uh, its weapons are also stone. Uh, so it's not like, you know, but it's a, it's, it's a very, it's a warrior statue is the best way I know okay. how to say it. Okay, nothing special about it then. Mm-mm. Um, is this just a grate in the... Uh, no, that is actually a, a metal chest. Okay. Well, we know what, what I'm doing here. Yes. Investigating. Okay. Checking for traps. Oh, you Thank finally you. did good. About freaking time. Okay. Uh, so you're checking this one out, and... Again, uh, there's there's nothing mechanical, but you do see that there is some sort of uh, a magical ward on this thing. Okay. And because um, you rolled so well, you know you're again you don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. you you know that there is something on this. Okay. Was it locked? Uh, it is locked. Uh, okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I don't know how much good it's going to do me. Okay. But I'm going to pull my cloak around me a little bit more, pull my hood up a little bit to try to give me a little bit of protection just in case something jumps out at me. Okay. Or sprays at me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to pull that shield out and kind of set it in front of me while I'm doing this to kind of see, you know, kind of as a protective barrier between me and whatever might be in there. Does okay. that make sense? Uh, so... Just so I understand, it's like you're going to pick the lock, but before you open it, you're going to hold the shield up in front of you? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll allow that. I know you don't have proficiency in shields, but we'll say that... I'm just kind of, I'm like holding with two hands kind of in front of me as like a... And I'll take the sword, and I'll flip open the lid. You know, I'll say that you can get a plus one if you want to hold the shield, like a proper shield. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I like normally you get a plus two on a shield... Uh, uh -huh. But you've, you've, you've hung around a paladin for years. You understand yeah. how a shield works. I'll give you a plus one to your AC. Okay. Okay, okay so if you want to uh, attempt to open that one. Yeah, like I said, I'll have the shield and I'll use the sword and try to flip it open with the sword so I can kind of stay back and kind of cover myself with the shield. You need me to roll some? Oh, uh, yeah, a dexterity to uh, for uh, your lockpicks. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to 
we're going to say that you're taking your time because, uh, again, it's just no fun if you fail. Uh, so you're able to, to open it up, and this one is filled with platinum bars. Jesus. Uh, but you don't have time to enjoy that because you notice the statue next to you start to move his arms. God damn it. I knew and it. then you also hear this one back here also taking a step. But this one is right next to you and it gets to make its attack. Uh, it gets two attacks. Uh, one of them is going to be a 16. You only had a 15 with the shield. Yeah. Um, and just like I'm trying to pull up one other thing because I thought I had... Uh, oh, now I think I remember where I put it. Never open the chest first. Investigate the room first. Well, you did uh, investigate it. It's just that it turns out that, you know... Oh, wait a minute. I'm, no, no, I'm in the wrong side. Uh, you don't actually... You don't possess Arcana, so you don't know that this. You know you couldn't find the magic on that thing. Right. And I'm just trust me. What I'm bringing up is going to be somewhat important okay. because it strikes the shield to hit you with one hit. Let me go ahead and uh, roll that damage, which is uh, D6 plus two. Uh, that's six points of bludgeoning damage. But okay. because it also hit that shield, you realize the shield is magical. And oh. let's, let's see what happens when the shield is struck. Oh, this is sort of interesting. <laughs> I'm going to read this one to you. Uh, I'll tell okay. you more about the shield later. Uh, okay. 1d12 monstrous spike tentacles instantly spring forth from the point of the shield and randomly attack anyone within range other than the wielder. Although these tentacles are large and heavy, they add no weight to the shield being held by the wielder. The tentacles continue to attack until destroyed. If no one else is within range, they lash about looking for targets. Wow. Let's so, see how many I tentacles. I was smart. I was smart. You get four tentacles. Let me make okay. notes of this. <laughs> this we'll, we'll do initiative in a minute. This is amazing. Okay. Um, so they all start to attack. Let me roll, let me roll them now. Uh -huh. And these things reach... Good God, dogs. These things reach 25 feet. Wow. Okay. Uh, one of those was a D12. Get out of there. So basically this guy. Uh, I don't have my map up at the second, but okay. Um, they, these things get... Uh, let me see. They count as whips. Uh, so they get a plus two. It's a, all right. Two of them are probably going to hit. I've got so many things up at the moment. Uh, <laughs> no, they they strike out, but they don't damage the thing in front of you. Uh, mm. It had its turn. You can have yours, and then we'll do a proper initiative. Uh, okay. I'm going to say, for the sake of convenience, the tentacles go on your turn, because I don't want to roll okay. a, a different initiative for each one. Okay. Um, you said that statue's made of stone? Uh, we're going to say it counts as animated armor, but okay. it, you know, each one is a statue. I just, I figured I'd give them some okay. static stats. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and maybe attack it. I don't know. I okay. mean, go ahead. Shit. No, really nowhere for me uh, to run away to. And you said you had pulled out that shit, that, uh, that sword Short you picked sword. up from earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have, hold on. I don't have any stats for anything uh, like go that. Go ahead and just pull, I think uh, a short sword might be... just roll a d20 for you? Uh, yeah. You know what? Let's let's just take a quick look at what a short sword is. But is it magical too? Well, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I w damn it. Roll 20. I wanted you to tell me you know, what a short sword does. It'll do 1d6 damage. Okay, so I need to 
Roll a d20. Right. And what do I add? Is it my dex modifier? Uh, Sorry. Yeah, you're proficient with this weapon, so uh, it would be, you know, yeah, it'll be uh, your dex and Plus your proficiency. Two. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. Oh, God. So that'd be uh, another five. So a total of ten. I'm okay. assuming that doesn't hit. That bounces off. Uh, go ahead yeah. and roll initiative. Mm hmm. Come on. Okay. Uh, you will act first, uh, and then the armors will go. Uh, this one has had, uh, you know, enough time to walk a few paces forward. Uh huh. And I will also tell you that when you made your, uh, your first attack, you know, you bounce off of the, the shield, uh, I mean the armor, but you do hear the voice in your head as your sword begins to wake up from its slumber. Are you to be my new wielder? Are we going to kill something? Yes. Let's let's kill these things. They're attacking me. Oh, good. Uh, your sword is a plus one sentient weapon. <laughs> so the 11 still didn't work, but you had it. Yeah, right. You, you picked up so many interesting items. And... <sighs> Okay, so, um, mm, okay, so I'll be like, all right, I'm going to make another attack on him. Okay. And, um. And the tentacles will attack after you. <sighs> this is just such the, the weirdest so set that's of combat. Plus, I'm so glad it's we're 21, so, so 21 to hit. Okay, that'll hit. Roll uh, a d6 and add one plus your dexterity. Oh. Ah, uh, a d6. Or if you want to attach a plus one sword to your character sheet right quick. Um, well, I rolled a six plus what you said, one, so that's seven. Yeah. Plus my dex. Uh-huh. That's nine. The proficiency doesn't get added in on damage, right? Not on damage. Okay. I, I didn't think so. For some reason, I'm having like a total brain fart here because I'm all excited now, so I can't think straight. Yeah. So. So what was. Nine points of damage. Nine points, okay. All right. And you hear the sword say, this thing is a, is a construct. That's no fun to kill. But it will kill me if we don't get rid of it. Then the tentacles go. Okay. Because, sure, why not? Well, um, yeah, I got to keep not? going back over to them. Oh, one of them got a natural 20. Uh, two of them what? will strike. But one gets the natural 20, and I just said that was, uh, let's see, uh, these things have slightly different stats uh, because I'm using where I got it from. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, we're going to call that uh, 10, 12, okay. Um, those two, I mean, that was just one hit. It cracked into it pretty good, and you can see a crack forming in the thing. The other tentacle goes, and that crack gets even wider. But now it is the armor's turn, and it uh, strikes. Uh, only one is going to hit, so let me deal that damage. All right. And my dogs are all riled up today. They will not shut up. Uh -huh. uh, that's eight points of bludgeoning damage. And the shield has another magical effect. Oh, jeez. Uh, this one was a 37. I need to... Uh, what does that mean? I don't know yet. I've, I've never actually used this item. Thirty-seven. I'm reading this to you for the first time. Okay. Any and all oh. dead humanoids within five miles of the shield rises zombies. Oh God, no! Um, there it's, were. It's almost. Like, this is almost like a wild magic surge thing. You figured this it out bad. very quickly. Oh God! Uh, fortunately for you, there were no zombies downstairs. Oh yay! That's good. 
Uh, but you have that you have that shield that I'm letting you use at a plus one. I know. Uh, I know. And I know. then this one will come forward. Two, three, four. It's this was a big room. It can't get to you yet. Uh, uh, it is your turn. Jeffrey. I am going to attack that construct again. Okay. Aiming specifically for the big crack. Okay. Uh, uh, nope, that's not uh, enough. So that's seven plus. Okay, well it says uh, that's and, seven plus. And you need an plus. eighteen to hit it. Oh yeah, 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 no. Uh, but your tentacles go wild. <laughs> uh, <laughs> None, of, so but none of them are able to deal any damage. So okay. the con the one in front of you goes again. Uh, mm -hmm. He gets one hit, uh, and he deals three points of bludgeoning damage. And you know what happens now. He rolled a thirty-one on his when he hit the shield. Let me see what a 31 does. Shit. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, this is a longer one. No matter where he is, the fourth oldest dragon in the realm suddenly loses his wings as well as any ability to fly or teleport in any way. This includes flying or teleportation by spell, <laughs> magic item, Loading vortex. <laughs> no form of flight or teleportation will work. Seriously, the dragon and the wielder instantly and magically know the following information. The wings and any ability to fly or teleport he may have had will return if the dragon directly kills the wielder. If the wielder is killed <laughs> by someone or something other than the dragon, he's not getting his wings back. The dragon. God damn it! There, there's more. This, <gasps> this is a long one. The dragon doesn't automatically know where the wielder is, but he knows who he is or she is. The effect was caused by the shield. Destroying the shield will not give the dragon his wings back. The true results of this effect are purely up to the dungeon master, so I'll skip <laughs> that part because I guess I have to make a note to reread 31. Uh -huh. But you know, uh -huh. the fourth oldest dragon in the world, if he was flying, he just fell out of the sky and he personally blames you. Okay. By the way, it's a free action for you to drop that shield. Oh no, I'm having fun with this. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you right quick. I, I got this item from the webcomic Goblins, and uh -huh. they had almost as much fun with it in a webcomic. Um, be glad you're not being struck by uh, five people at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so yeah, now yeah, the yeah. other one has had time to get up to you, and he uh. makes his two attacks. Uh, ooh, and there's a 16 and a 15 to hit. So, mm -hmm. first the damage. Uh, that's nine points of bludgeoning. And now two more rolls on the magic shield. A 91. Oh, I, I'm i going to have to go almost to the last uh, picture for this one. Okay, 91. All right, let's see how this one works. Hundreds of thousands of purple rose petals fall from above, even indoors, for the next 10 minutes. When the effect is finished, about 6 inches of petals will blanket the ground in a 400 foot area. <sighs> it smells very sweet as purple rose petals start floating down. And now a 71 for that next hit. 71, 71. Everything that the wielder is wearing, carrying, wearing, carrying, and wielding, except for the shield, disappears forever. No! Yes, that's what it says. Everything but the shield is gone. Um, 
Sorry. Uh, it's your turn. Your your uh, bag of loot. Your all your weapons, every everything but the shield, which by the way, includes your clothes. <sighs> oh, okay. I I didn't know that one was an option. I mean, there's a hundred. There's a, a D100 table. Huh. Boy, you know well. this is really going to screw up that uh that recent adventure when I said this right here takes place before then. Mhm. Mm, yeah. Mhm. Hmm. Um, yeah, well, turn. yeah, yeah. Um, I'll let you I'm keep your clothes. Use... I mean, you could go upstairs and steal some. So. Yeah. Um, no, it's fine. I mean, the, that's I know fine. the clothes we'll, aren't we'll what play. you care we'll, we'll, about. No. Oh no, I don't give a shit about the clothes. Yes. Yeah. Um. No, oh, we, we, uh, we, no we, wait, the tentacles we'll, we'll go after you. Sorry, what? Uh, yeah, no, I was going to say, no, that, that's fine. We will play it the way that it's read. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't undoing it. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a shield of wonder. And it. you said, I'm having fun with this. Yeah, because it was funny. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, well... I only have 13 hit points. And now I'm naked and have nothing but a shield in my hand. Uh -huh. So I'm going to use my disengage to make my way to the ladder. Okay. And get the blank out of dodge. Okay. That's not a problem. You're able to get uh, up. Uh, they, those things can't go up to the ladder, I'm going to say. They, yeah. they strictly stay down there. Well... I'll let you tell the rest of the party about this one. Yeah. So, what I'm essentially going to have to do at this point is um, I'll make my way back upstairs. So I'm going to crawl back out that window and I'm going to jump down. Okay. And uh, then, you, then I'm going to have to uh, sneak my three, way back to the manor. You take three points of damage when you jump out of the window. Okay. I'll assume that you took some clothes out of the drawer. If I could find anything. Yeah, sure. his clothes are there. You know, like so you're able to grab. They may not fit you great, but you grab right. some clothes and you know a cloak. Um, <sighs> Should have quit when I was ahead. Did you keep the shield? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Good. Good. I'm trying to move the map over, and it's doing all the screwy stuff. Okay, there we go. Okay, so. Um, you I have, have no the shield of wonder. Uh, after you know ten minutes, the tentacles go away. Okay. Uh, and you had a wingless old dragon who knows you are solely responsible for getting his, for costing him his flight, and he has okay. to kill you to get it back. Awesome. Well, I guess that's the end of my character. No, I mean, you're still alive. Uh-huh. I got nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Everything, everything is gone. Everything. Mm hmm You have your friends. They're not going to be any help. Okay, I think this might be a good place for us to end the recording. Because this is, you know, is going to, we're going to need to talk after this. Uh huh. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here. I'll decide if I'm gonna upload it later.